Uh, good day, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome back to my third in a series of uh, making aircraft tutorials in 3D Studio Max. Well, this is where we left off from last time, which was uh, we had broken up our three view um, drawing into its three separate views uh, top, front, and uh, side. And what we're going to do today is we're actually going to create the fuselage. Um, basically what it'll entail is creating a primitive object and uh, breaking it out into, it in, into its individual vertices and then shaping those vertices to make it look like our fuselage. So the very first thing that we're going to do is we're actually going to select our front view. Uh, that's happened to be the way that I like to do it. Uh, normally what's going to have to happen is you're going to have to take your primitive and manipulate it in three different uh, views the front side and the top uh, I like to do them in those orders but uh, like I said before there's no right or wrong way it's whatever makes it easier for you so what we're going to do is we're going to create our first primitive and we're going to select create and then cylinder now uh, the reason I use cylinder is because in essence a fuselage looks like a cylinder. Uh, it's an odd shaped cylinder but that's basically what it most looks like out of all of these primitives. Also I prefer to work in full screen mode so I will select the front view and toggle min max. That way I get the full screen view of what I'm working on. And basically uh, how you do this is you put your cursor somewhere around the center of your object like this hold down your left mouse button, drag it out until it's the approximate size of your fuselage. Now, the cylinder of course is a three-dimensional object and we only see two dimensions here. So, we're going to change it in two dimensions, let go of the button, and then just move it up and down a bit, or up a bit, so that it changes the length of it, which you don't actually see in this view. In order to do that, you would have to select the top view, which is the T key, and now you can see that it's a certain length. Now, as you can tell from this drawing, it is not the proper length. The e there's an easy way to do this, actually, and that is to go up to your uh, Modify tab and select where it says Height. We know that the fuselage is actually 32 feet long. And so we change it to 32 feet, then we do an align again on the top view, and we would go minimum, minimum in the Y position, take off the X of course to move it back, and click OK. Now it's perfectly lined up lengthwise, and it's the right length. So now we go back to our front view again. Now, as you can see from the front view, uh, the cylinder is obviously, number one, it's not the right shape perfectly in the front view, and it's also too big. So what we would do in that case is we would actually select uh, our, modif our scale, which would be up here, and we, do not, we want a non-uniform scale. The difference between the three is a uniform scale, if you move it in any direction, it will change in all three directions. A uh, non-uniform scale means that it, you can change it in one direction only, and the squash, it'll change it in two directions. So we want non-uniform scale. We will select the, uh, this uh, axis here, and if you move it left and right, you can see that you can squash it. So what you do is you actually move it out till it's the right width of your fuselage, and then you go to the other axis and you shorten it, until it's approximately the right one. Now you'll notice that this is not perfectly centered. So what you would do in that case is you put it approximately the right height and then you would go up to the move, select and move and move it down a little bit. And now as you can see it's the right length and it's the right width. But there is a problem of course. It's not the exact same shape. You'll notice that the fuselage sticks out here, here, here and here. This is where you will collapse the cylinder into a or convert the cylinder into an editable mesh. So you, what you would do in that case is you would right click on there and convert to editable mesh. Now what we're going to do is we're going to select the individual vertices by clicking on the plus sign selecting vertices and as you can see now we can select individual vertices. 
So what we're going to do is we're going to actually 